Shante Savage. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. It's been like 30 years and you don't look like a day over uh, 20. Like I can, I can say that about you. Well, you know, the, the lights, you know, it's the angles, it's all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and when people say you look the same, I'm like, listen, I had hair then. I didn't start growing facial hair until I was like in my 40s. Like I'd have had none of this, none of that I, then. I, right, I don't remember you having facial hair. No, I just had like a little mustache that kind of showed up every now and then. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. When I went, I was like one of those late bloomers in life, you know. But but it it, it all I guess work, it works. It works on the, out, yeah. On the end, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Be happy for that. Exactly. So <laughs> you you have been you know when you see artists, people haven't heard in a long time. Mm-hmm. They always say, "What have you been up to?" And I'm sure you have been working and oh, yeah. performing. Talk to us. Like, walk us into it. What has Shantae uh, Savage been up to since the years I've heard you back in the day in Chicago? Okay. So, you know, I tell people, I tell people, because a lot of people are like, what has she been doing? What has she been doing? And it's like, um, go to my, go to Spotify. And it's <laughs> like, I'm, no, but not, not, not in a shady way. But seriously, <laughs> like. I've been doing a lot of writing. I've been mm-hmm. doing a lot of, I've been doing a lot of house music too. Mm. Now, you know, like house, like people forget, like it's like a double-edged sword for me. It's a mm-hmm. blessing. I won't even say a curse, but it's a double-edged sword in that, you know how our industry, they like to categorize you. Right. right? And so I guess in a way, uh, I'm, I'm my, my big, my biggest success is on the R and B side. Right. I also, my lead in, you know, what got me in the door was my house side, right. which is like a natural Chicago thing. It's like, I tell people it's like DC and go, go. Like mm-hmm. if, you, if you're from Chicago, you got some house in you. So it's like, that's how I started professionally you right. know what I'm saying so it's like I always kind of go back to that it's like always home as well so I've been doing t- Terry Hunter and I Terry's mm-hmm. like my partner like DJ Terry Hunter Chicago yeah. for show yeah Terry is like my partner uh in crime like everything that I've done lately uh as far as production and you know we've just locked in and and we're you know we're doing both so mm-hmm. but Mo- mostly like the really because I've had a release now I did take some time where I didn't do anything and that's the okay. whole other thing <laughs> okay. but as of like I would say 2014 tw- from 2014 until now I've been putting out like house records <laughs> and, and a lot of people don't know too that that house music dance music is really big in Europe Exactly. Like we we always think like like the buck stops here in exactly. Chicago and in the United States, but no, it's like huge over there. Exactly, it's an American. That's how we think as Americans. Right. And as a matter of fact, uh, uh, some some of those releases are, I wouldn't say exclusively, but both mostly exclusive to Europe. Like I did a few records for Dawn. I did a few releases for Dawn Records. Okay. Um. And that's like UK and Europe. And so right. those things did pretty well over there. And uh, so, yeah, I forget. I forget to say that, that those are exactly. like European records. What what, what that, was that experience like for you, though? Like wh- when your, your music, big in the United States, but when you go to Europe and people know you, like, do you remember what that, what that felt like the first time you experienced that or saw that? You know what? Honestly... I will say that I will survive though, which is an R and B record, was still mm-hmm. bigger than that. And the reaction, like I went, I I was in the UK, I was in Europe before that, and it was like still the up and coming ingenue, and it was like love, but it was still earlier on. But when I went back after I will survive that was a whole nother thing. Like that was like, people know you in, in the, uh, well, they didn't have Starbucks. People know right. you in McDonald's. <laughs> you <laughs> right. know what I'm saying? Um, so that was cool, but nothing was like, uh, I would have to say Africa. 
Uh-huh. That that was the one that totally blew my mind. Blew your mind, like, huh? More than that was more than the United States. Like that was like the biggest love hug thing. I'm in the airport, and that was like the first time. Just like ticket agents, shoe shine people mm-hmm. were like. She's here. You know, it was like coming to America type thing. Yeah. Me in Africa. That was right. like getting that kind of love blew my mind. I I was like, oh my God. Wow. You know? And it was you know, like I, it was I, just crazy. That was crazy. I, I can only imagine because when when I met you, you were always a mild mannered person. And was that because I don't I don't know no Shante. Like I don't know no Shante. So it was what was Shantae really like? Like before Shantae became this 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 superstar, <laughs> what who is Shantae and what what was she like then? I am a mild mannered person uh-huh. sometimes. Well, for the most part, I'm chill. Right. I'm a chill person, but well, I don't know Rick Party because like I we were I was at the studio during literally during the Betcha Never Five Days. That that's like okay. Yeah, I'm at the radio station, so it's like that's home training. You know, you know right. how to act. But that was a time I was like the club kid. Like I went, you know, I had the phase from okay, and that's my musical background. Church girl. Mm-hmm. Like I grew up in the church literally. That's kind of where I hone my skills. Like I at 13, I was by 13, I was like the minister of music for my church. Wow. Like, I like I taught like I was in charge of all the choirs, like even mm-hmm. my parents' choir, like from little kids to them. I'm teaching that, right? And right. then by the time I got like, mm, you know, junior, senior year, it was all about the house parties and, you know, fake ID <laughs> yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, you know, I I had a whole stint of the club kid life, which is, which was really the beginning of my love of house music, because I was like, and you know, Chicago, I was in Sawyer's and 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 the music box and all that at four o'clock in the morning, getting in trouble, coming in, the sun coming up. <laughs> my parents were like, what do you, who do you think you are? Like. Right. If the sun is coming up, and it was like, okay, I'm gonna have to take this punishment for a week. So it's like. You know, I have home training, but you know, I, I'm a, I'm a turn up girl when it's time to turn up. But I have home training, so yeah, it's yeah. like. But I'm a cancer, so it's like, I'm the type of person where I'm chill. Like I like to, you know, I like to observe before I let my hair down. Mm-hmm. If you will, that's what I. Then that's what I got from you. Like you, you were always smiling, <laughs> but you're like. Always just like a- analyzing people. That's what I got from you. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, you you oh, you got to do that. I tip. I put my toe in to, to see if the water is warm first. Uh huh. And you I got know. that from you. I got that from you. So I mean, and you just you blew up in Chicago. You were like um, our our little sweetheart when you came out. Um, uh, a love thing. I will survive. What what, what was the response like? When um not only just when when Chicago received you, but when you made I Will Survive, because that's that's a that's an international song right there. Yeah. To get the reception and love from everybody around the world, what did that feel like? And what was that? What was that you all know, about there? Yeah. I gotta give like okay, I gotta get I gotta give props to Elroy for that one because Elroy mm-hmm. Smith. Yeah. Because um like I had I had success with with Betcha Never Fine, like what mm-hmm. we're doing now. But that was still like, she's new, the new ingenue. And 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 especially for Chicago, Chicago and New York, cause Hot mm-hmm. 97 kind of broke that record. Like okay. they like brought me to Disney World and like- Wait, 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 wait. Slow up, yeah. slow up. You trying to tell us that uh, New York broke your music before Chicago Hot, did? Hot 97 rock Ooh. 97 fine. Elroy, I Elroy, you know you told us that you broke that record first, Elroy. Not, you told, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> that's never fine. Not, not the. It was okay. still not the way that it. Okay, that's a whole. I will survive is a whole nother story. Exactly. But it's like they, they, they're the ones who pretty much really got it going 
on the radio. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you know how it was back then to get to get your artists on the radio. It was yeah. it was RCA, but. The fact that our Hot 97 played it and, you know, they brought me to Universal Studios and Disney World and all that kind of stuff, that really helped push the record because that was kind of like, it was kind of lukewarm until they started rocking it. That's when Wendy Williams was there. Oh, wow. So it was like, after that, it just, you know, the rise really started. Because I'll never forget. Remember the Riviera? Of course. Friday I, nights, the Riv. Oh, yes, nice. I, I was yes. hosting there. Yes. Yes. I will yeah. never forget. And see, that's another thing. I'll never forget the love that I got at home for I Will Survive. When I came home and I had a show at the Riviera, like, it was so, like, electric in there. I didn't even have to sing the words. And it was like... <laughs> That was the beginning of that Bet You Never Find. That was the beginning. And it was like, from there, that was like, okay. I, you know, that was that was the beginning to like the the uh ascension. Yeah. But 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 fast forward to um I will survive. Now, Elroy Smith heard a demo of that record, mm-hmm. right? It was nowhere near time to release that record. As a matter of fact, it was supposed to be, it was for a soundtrack. Okay. And we had established such a, a good relationship that, right. you know, I would play him stuff. And and I was in, I was in, at the studio, I was at GCI, like, for an interview for, we were talking about my upcoming mm-hmm. album. And we hadn't picked a single yet. So he asked me what I was doing. And my manager, my role manager at the time, he's like, well, as a matter of fact, she just recorded this uh, this song for a movie soundtrack. It was for the First Wives Club okay. with Bette Midler and all that. Nice, yes. And I, his name was Andre. He played it for Elroy. And Elroy was like, what? This is your first single? And I don't know if it was that day, but Elroy took that demo and Elroy just started playing it. Wow. Like nobody had ever heard that. And who's going to stop Elroy? Who's going to say, no, you can't play that record? He was the man. And for every, for anybody watching right here, Elroy Smith was the program director of the radio station <laughs> WGC in Chicago, which I was a personality of many years ago. And he's now programming in Orlando at Star 94.5. Oh, that's so, where he, okay. Yeah, he's in Orlando now, yeah. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. But As yeah. of 2023, y'all. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay, yeah. so literally, the label was, they. you know, they didn't want to piss him off. They didn't want to tell him to stop playing the record. Right. But he literally lit a fire under them. And it was like, okay, we know what the first single is. And everything just shifted around that. And they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll put it on the soundtrack, but th- this is the first <laughs> single. And so Elroy, I'll, I'll always I'll always be grateful because not only did he commit to that record, mm-hmm. he played that record until it was officially released. So he wow. played that record for damn near two years. Wow. And, and, and I mean, luckily people still loved it and... He treated that song like it was new until it was till it actually came out, and it was like he he broke that record. What year was that, Chante? What year was that? Do you remember? Uh, ninety six. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah ninety six. Okay, cause I, okay, that was probably like the last year because I've been at GCI, and ninety six is when I was phasing out going to Atlanta. Right. I had some responsibility in that too. Uh huh. I'm gonna take some of oh, that. I'm gonna I take know. some did of that. I, I'm gonna take. Did, not, did we not talk about? Did I not come up there and spend time with you on that? Of course, you did. You were. You, of course, you were up there absolutely a lot. I mean, you were definitely one of my favorites. You know, watching Shante Savage coming to the studio. Yeah, you know, I Lisa. Mean, you, Lisa E would always say, "Guess who's coming up." Greg Shante I love, Savage. I, I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah, I love <laughs> hanging out with y'all. It was yeah. like. It was chill. It was like it was like there was there were no adjustments. You know what I mean? You know, like mm-hmm. some environments you go in and you have it was like home. So it was like I Absolutely. was real comfortable with y'all. Yeah. You have been I saw someone uh in the comments on a a YouTube video 
they compared you to um, Ella Fitzgerald with a taste of Shaka Khan. I'm not mad at that. Neither I'm am I. Not mad at that at all. Neither am I. That's how it's dope. What compare? What other comparisons? Uh, comparisons have you had? I totally get that because uh, uh, I have a definite jazz in my death. So from here about the rain, I listen to her like, oh, what? What speaker doesn't? Like if you if you're about your business as a vocalist, uh -huh. you gonna study Shaka Khan. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And also like my range is soprano, so it was like it was like if you're a soprano and you not matching Shaka, you ain't no soprano. So yeah. it was like she was she's a she's a big influence. But I had a lot that's what I love about coming up in, in our time. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this being a radio guy, we had everything though. We had from Elton John yeah. to, um, we listened to Elton John on the radio, George Michael, Luther, mm -hmm. uh, Anita. Yes. There, there was just like this medley of artists and different sounds and you know, from Stevie Wonder to just 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 a myriad of sounds, and it was like, I those are my influences. Like the radio that we had, it was like we were. I was so blessed in that way. You know, I got like church and jazz at home. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But coming up, it was like we. I, I listened to everything, everything. Wow! Yeah. Did you ever get into playing any instruments at all? Because oh, I know yeah, I sometimes. Keyboards. I'm like, really? I didn't know that. Okay. Maybe okay. I knew that or maybe I didn't. Okay. I think I did one show. You may uh -huh. have been there. I, w I did a show for GCI once. It was like a Mother's Day thing. And I, okay. I played the in I played the some of I Will Survive. That's me actually playing on the intro of I Will Survive. Oh, wow. Didn't like know the, that. The acapella part. That's me playing. Yeah. Yeah. But the rest is That's Steve Hurley. Steve Hurley produced that record. Yeah, you know how important is it? Because um, you you named a lot of artists, wide ranging from Elton John to, to 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 Prince, and how important is it as a as a musician, as a singer, that people listen to everybody? My daughter listens to an artist by the name of I don't know if you heard of her, uh, by the name of Lave, mm -hmm. L A U F E Y. She's so, like, oh yeah. she, it it it, it kind of gives me like a a fifties feel kind of jazz. Oh, Check it out when you get it. Wait, did she just win a Grammy? Probably. I know who you're. Oh yeah, she's brilliant. I'm, I'm new oh. to her because oh. my daughter. She will listen to anything from Lave to Kendrick Lamar to she, Tyler the Creator to SWV, Shantae yeah. Savage, like, Thank like you. literally. She. Has I was like, I know. Her. She really does. She How really important is it to people to listen to everybody? Oh my God, that's refreshing to hear because. Yeah. A lot of artists these days, like they, and it's not their fault because we were exposed to that. Yeah, like radio played all that stuff for us. Now mm -hmm. radio, it's not. They don't. They don't have that variety, so they have to seek it out. So I, I, I commend them even more. I commend young people even more now because they right. take the time to seek out. A variety of music that's so important that's so important in like finding yourself finding your sound like listening to what you like it's like like a, a big pot of gumbo you know a little side little bit of this little bit of that little bit of this and then you you find yourself you know what i mean because i i nobody should sound like anybody else but i think that when you expose yourself to different sounds different emotions different and listen to the lyrics and see where mm. they're coming from listen to the instruments and feel it you find yourself that way as an artist so that's like vital to me that's yeah. vital like i i, I really kind of um not I, mm, not shady but i kind of shut off when i'm when i'm dealing with artists who are are, are myopic Okay. Because that just means that to me, you you don't have dimension, and I think art. Yeah, I was about to look in the dictionary to find out what that meant for a <laughs> you, know, it's, you know, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's like you, it art is is broad, art is vast, right? 
You know what I mean? And it's like, you can never stop learning. You can never stop growing. So mm-hmm. I, th- I think I think artists should listen to everything. Yeah. You, you've you worked with some of the, the biggest names uh, in music. Um, and you, you just mentioned how important lyrics are. Mm-hmm. When when you write a song, when you sing a song, do you draw from your own experience? Most of the time, I do, but a lot okay. of times there are times like there are times I'm I'm writing about somebody else's life or mm-hmm. a friend or something. Some somebody confided something in me, uh, with me, uh, or something that resonates. Like it doesn't have to be my experience at that moment, but something that resonates with me, like um. There was uh Terry and I Terry and I re- he released the his first single from his album called mm-hmm. Self Love. We released that in in the summer. Okay. And it you the song was we had a different title for it. But I called him about this song because I was watching remember the show Scandal? Yes, I love that show, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was like this big climactic uh end of a series where she was she was deciding whether she was going to go with this guy or this guy <laughs> and at the end right. she chose herself and mm. that resonated with me so much like okay. she was like I choose me and it was like that's I, I I I that just hit me totally and I wrote a whole song about that and then I ended up titling it self love but it sometimes it could be stuff like that Right. You, know? you you and mentioned I can wake up with a song. Too. Okay, I, and I love that's the best time when you get some rest and you wake up. You wake up with an idea in the middle of the night. You kind of you write down the lyrics and stuff like that. Oh my god! Yeah, if you're lucky though. Right. If you're lucky. It, right, trying to remember what you what you what you dreamt about. Oh yeah. my god! There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than hearing like the greatest song of all time, and then you can't remember it when you wake up. So sad. <laughs> so I, I've yeah. learned to force myself out of the bed. Yeah, you you said something. Uh, you uh, you ch- you chose yourself, right? Mm-hmm. You you said that, and um, which brings me to this. You said somewhere through the years, you stopped doing anything. Was that you choosing yourself, or, or what Actually, was going no, on there? You quite the contrary. That was the opposite of that. Um, okay, it was in. I would say from two thousand six. To 10, my mom was really sick and she's mm. with us, but I just dropped everything to take care of her. You said she's no longer with us. She's no longer with us. Okay, so sorry to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I just dropped everything because the most important thing at that time was her. Mm-hmm. And, but you know, it's like God, God will just send you through something and it's like, it could be the worst thing you think. But there, there was something so, uh, something that really changed me about it. And that, and you realize after the fact that it happened, and it was like, it, it, it was the saddest, the saddest, most beautiful experience I've ever had. And it's like she and I, through those times, because she wasn't always really, really sick in the beginning, but right. it, it progressed, but we bonded our bond was just so strong and it's like it's a type of love that you don't get to see and it's all it's also um literally seeing somebody merging into divinity Mm. and so it was um it was an experience i had to have and i'm grateful for it but yeah i had to shut down for that that was tough and then it took a while to reboot you Mm -hmm. know but yeah, that was a that was the time. I th- those two years, I I didn't do any music. It's yeah. like I'm walking around with this huge hole mm-hmm. in my you know in my heart, and it's like so for a while you're numb, but you're changed. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like honestly, Rick, like for the first first few months, I was like, uh, you. It's like when you lose a parent that you're close to. Yeah. I'm. I was damn near in an embryonic state. Like I'm in. I'm in bed in a fetal position, and mm-hmm. it's like you know it's coming. That's another thing. You know it's coming. Mm-hmm. You've done all the preparation for it. Right. And but still, it was like 
it, it may as well have just happened like that. Yeah. It hits to me. It, it hits the same way almost. Right. But, you know, it's like it just being surrounded by people you love and people mm-hmm. who love you, that helped more than anything. And it's like people give you your time and you really have to allow yourself to experience it. But you, I really had to just snap myself out of it as well. Mm-hmm. But, but you can't rush it. Because right. like you say, and it's been it's been over 10 years now. And it's like you heal, but that scar is still there. Still there. It's yeah. still there. It's just like it's just not one day. And I know you have to agree with it. There's not one day that goes by that you don't think of right. that person or, you, you know, you feel your mom or you, there's not one day that goes by. Right. But you get stronger. It's like a muscle that you get stronger and, you know, you're 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 able to live with it. And then knowing you know, believing in the afterlife. And I know she's with me. It's like, Mm -hmm. there's so many things that, you know, that remind me of her. And it's like, I really feel like little signs and, you know, you feel, you know, that you have like that, 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 um, energy around you absolutely all the time. So that's comforting as well. Have you ever gone through the, the, um, that stage in life where we feel like, okay, we, we're just sometimes being selfish because, at, at some point, we all have to leave. And your mother probably, she did so much work for so many people as my mother did. I felt like, you know, my mother probably just, I'm glad she's not here with all this stuff that we're seeing today in the world. Oh, my God. Yeah. I swear to you, I would not have wished the pandemic on my mom. Mm. I'm like, as much as I would want, I want her to be there and I would, like do anything to get her back. I'm glad she didn't have to experience that. Yes. She would have, she would have hated that. Yes. You know, and, and my mom was such a free spirit. She Mm -hmm. loved travel. And, and she was like, she was like big mama. Like she was the confidant and the matriarch for it. And my family, family is huge. So whenever Mm -hmm. stuff, and, and with my family spread out all of, across the you see, the world. So that's another thing. It's like people, I have cousins everywhere. I never, when somebody says they're my cousin, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I really, I was like, okay. Right. So she was like a confidant to so many people. And like, if something went down, she wouldn't hesitate to jump on the plane. That would have driven her literally insane. She would have yeah. been depressed. So I'm, yeah, there's lots of time. And then so much that's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just, wouldn't want that for her. So there, there is a big side of that that I'm like, I'm glad she didn't have to deal with. Yeah. You know, speaking of pan- the pandemic, uh, pre-pandemic, um, we lost Elijah McClain in uh, Aurora, Col- Colorado, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. Um, and I'm just, just looking around and look at this. Shantae Savage is all over sh- uh, social justice with Tear It Down with Shauna. Ah! You you heard that? Oh come on now, man! What 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 made you jump in on it? I mean, how could I not? Mm -hmm. Like see that? I mean, like when you were asking me who I am, that's a part. And and sometimes, Rick, I swear I have to like bring her down some. Yeah, you know because there is, and I I guess that's that's part of my dad. Right. Oh, there's like a I won't call it a there's a I got a little revolutionary spirit in me and it's I like love it. I couldn't I just could not be quiet about that like mm-hmm. what as a black woman like as a black person like mm-hmm. how could we be quiet and it's like okay how how could I contribute cuz I'm like losing my mind it's like I'm not trying to get tr- uh, uh, trampled on in these mm-hmm. streets, but if I have to go out here, I will. So, but it's like, okay, what can I do to speak to to my people? What can the how? And and I was like, I got on the phone. I was like, Terry, I I gotta I gotta speak. I gotta I gotta we gotta do something. And it was like, um, it was it was cathartic. You know, it was yeah. very cathartic just to get it out. And it was like I was ready. It was the, if the re- revolutionary, if the revolution was going down, I was ready. 
I feel that. So, I mean, that that's what inspired that. And I got Shauna on the phone who just totally killed that record. Always does. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love that because... These are times in our life that we're gonna act, in our life that we're gonna actually play back in history, and we're gonna talk about when when our stories are told. It's gonna be more than uh, the the music we played. It's gonna right. be wh- wh- how do we use our voices when it mattered? That right. song, one of the songs is gonna stand out. That song is gonna stand out. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. That mean I mean I meant that. I meant that. No, absolutely. I I, I can you know I I. I I'm glad I'm at the age now where I know what I know because um, then I, I think I, like you said, I think I would have been such a revolutionary. I, I probably have would not even been on the radio at the time. Cause right. after I left Chicago, some I started doing some things I shouldn't do on the radio. I thought I was like a, a young shock jock. Right? <laughs> right. And then imagine me being a revolutionary. I, it, it, it wouldn't have lasted too long, man. I mean, <laughs> life right. had to happen for me, you know? Right. It's a beautiful thing. So, you know, you're making music, uh, you're known around the world, you had some wins, you had some losses, losing your mom, but, you know, the little apples that fall far, uh, that fall far uh, from the tree, your son, he's an artist. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Ari, Ari Styles. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Come on. I'm working. I'm working. I see. <laughs> see. That's what I was like. I don't have to worry about Rick. Right. Um, yeah, and it's like, that was one of the things. Okay, so Ari is an alumni of uh, Fisk, Fisk uh, College. Right. On HBCU. And it was like, we made a deal. It was like, okay, you got to finish school, and then we could talk. But honestly, I didn't really know how passionate he was about that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And it's like, knowing what I knew, because I went, I didn't finish. And it was like, uh, I was fortunate enough to get a deal while I was in school. And so honestly, the like my college was literally being on a an actual promo tour with a real label. So mm-hmm. it kind of balanced itself out. But- right. There were times that I wish I had finished, you know, because the, the the industry is like yeah, absolutely. You know? And I I didn't want him to have that regret, I, you right. know. I wanted him to at least have that under his belt, no matter what. Mm-hmm. So that was the deal. And so one day, um, I get a call from um one of his friends, and. Uh, of course, Ari put him up to it. It was around graduation time. <laughs> it was around graduation time. And he wanted to do a show. Mm-hmm. And I think Guam or something, as opposed to walking across stage for graduation. Wow. And Guam? And I, yeah. And oh, it's wow. like, he had this record with Waka Flocka at the time oh, uh-huh. that I didn't know about. Right. And so it was, it, first of all, it was like, it hit me. I didn't even, I didn't know anything. <laughs> he purposely kept it from me. Right. And, and so it was like, all I could do, it, it, he and his dad and I was like, okay, all right, go for it. Cause he finished, you, you did your thing. So just go for it. So mm-hmm. I support him. Um, the most thing that I, the, 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 the thing I'm most proud of mm-hmm. where, where he's concerned is that he is a writer nice and that is the part that he took after me that i'm the most proud of because i think that solidifies you more than anything that can that can sustain you if nothing else can right does he ever sit down with you and ask hey hey, mom can you can you um you know put me on game you know share share, what was that not really not really he will call me about a, a, a contract or something. Okay. Okay. You know, and he'll ask me, he will ask my opinion in that aspect. Uh, but as far as the content, musical content, he is very independent about that, but he loves it when I, when I give him feedback. So, mm-hmm. you know, and then I try to be, I'm just open-minded. Cause like I, I work with a lot of young people as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like, 
you I'm the type of I'm like a vessel so it's like you can never stop learning so you know I will give him a a, a pointer here and there and what I do love is that the times that I don't think he's paying attention he'll show me down the line that he did so mm-hmm. it's like we have that it's it's just like a no stress type thing right you know how with kids the thing you tell them to do that's what they're not gonna do exactly so I kind of treat it like that, you know. Yeah. I'll, I'll delicately suggest something, and 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 down the line, I say, "Oh, okay." Yeah. Okay, I see you use the, and I'll casually say, "Okay, I I see you put a little vocal on this," or right. blah blah blah, and you know, he he, you know, he's pretty happy about my feedback. What what surprised you? Like who surprised you in this business? Maybe a young artist, maybe an, an artist that we that we all know and love, and you didn't think that. That person knew me. That person knows me. What surprised you in your career? Because I know there had to have been a few. There were a f- there were there. I had a few of those moments. Like, um, I would say one of those is like you know when like when you first go well not the first time but one of the times at like the Soul Train Awards where people like uh like rappers like Tretch and mm-hmm. Snoop and stuff like that. They're like say Shantae and like <laughs> I know yourself and I'm like what really you know what I mean right. like um stuff like that like a lot of the some of the hip hop uh hip hop artists really kind of like surprised me and then there was this one one time um I think I was presenting I was getting ready to present at the Soul mm-hmm. Awards or something earlier on and Mary Mary J. Blige was in the wings and she shared with me that fast. We hugged and she shared to me how much I will survive meant to her. Wow. And that I'll carry with me forever because it kind of caught me off guard. You know what All I mean? Right. You never know who's listening. And and it's like, it's like, that's what we're doing this for. And that's for right. her to, to, to say that, because sometimes... People will admire admire something you've done and not say anything. Right. Like I'm not that kind of. I'm 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 gonna let somebody know. And the way she did that, she was so humble about it, and she really meant that. She was like, you know, she was like that record really like helped me. You know, I love that record, and right. we embraced, and it was that caught me off guard. Yeah. To this day, I what that means so much to me. I, I see it 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 looks like it's it's an emotional moment for you. It was because she yeah. she she had gone through something. Yeah. And it was like therapeutic pretty yeah. much for her. And what does Shante Savage meet artists that want to be taken under her wing? You know what? I've been invited to like um like guest judge shows, mm-hmm. talent shows, and take a look at artists. I've been I work with a lot of producers and, you know, sometimes we're listening uh, Mm -hmm. to see if artists that we want to write or develop with. And the, to me, the main thing is, is to listen to Mm. them. Um, I have had uh, also like uh, artists from around the world. They'll just send me stuff. They'll just, and dance, like they'll send me something like dance routines that they've done to a, a record or whatever, or, just stuff like that. But when they ask for my advice, when I'm, well, first of all, when, if I'm working with them, um, I'm very selective about an artist that I work with. Uh, of course I look for the talent, but I just need them to be Uh open-minded because it's a, to me, it's a -a vis-a-vis. It's like, I'm looking at you, but you're looking at me as well. And I let them know that I'm open to learn something from them as well. Mm-hmm. And what I have gotten from a lot of them, especially some of these young producers, is the technology is amazing. You're right. Like some of that stuff, I'm like, y'all are lazy. Like <laughs> some of the stuff that they don't have to do. Right. That we had to do is like sometimes I have to remind myself, girl, you don't have to sing this a thousand times to do this stack you could just hit this button and it could just like sync it up for you or you know you know what i mean i'll be uh-huh. like and i'm so used to doing certain things 
a certain way, but I've learned to be open-minded and sometimes let the technology not. Now, one thing I won't do okay. is um, I'm not going to let a, a machine like uh, like pitch me. Gotcha. Now, now, that's the one thing I'm not going to tolerate. Like if I'm working with an artist, we're going to hit them notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to, you know, and I, <laughs> you know, I like teach the pitch because it's going to help you along the way. Right. You can't let a machine do that because when you're live, that machine ain't going to help you. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Certain things like that. But um, I, I just like learning technology from them. And sometimes uh, I've had to learn, really, I like the way that they don't follow structure mm -hmm. as far as writing the song. Right. Like the way we grew up, like, okay, you have your verse, you have your hook, you have your bridge. Sometimes they'll just do just stuff just all over the place. And I did a song, um, I did a song last summer with, uh, uh, I don't know, have you heard of A-Track? He's like the dance producer. It sounds it, familiar. So he yeah, sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah, one of his younger artists. Okay. And I did a, um, I wrote a song to one of his tracks. Okay. And it's a whole song, right? Mm hmm And when he's, the song was like, well, you know, they're like three something. The four song, I get one song. Right. When he ended it, it was like barely a three minute song. Wow. So they like take a song and all the, all the parts that they like, they'll just put it together and create a new song. Yeah. From the song that you presented to them. Yeah. And it's a whole new song. But it's still your song. <laughs> That's so strange when they do that. I don't. I yeah. don't understand that. But, if, oh, but what can we do? We got to kind of roll with the times, though. We got to roll with it, right? And I wasn't mad at it, though. Right. I wasn't. I, in fact, I really liked it, and I thought that was like really cool because once again, I don't think I don't think art should have boundaries. So, mm -hmm. and and having that experience working with this younger artist. That kind of like opened my mind to okay, all right, I'm gonna do something, and I've done stuff like that, that I love. So let's talk I about that. I, like, yeah. let's talk about the stuff that, that 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 you've done, the stuff that you that you're working on. Because I'm looking at Shante Savage, and I'm looking like you got another forty years, fifty years. <laughs> like, come on, like, like you just like just took time back here. Oh my God! Yeah. Tell that to my knees, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Now, um, now, I'm just excited. I'm like, I'm in a place where I'm excited about music again. And mm -hmm. it's like, um, for example, like R&B. One of the reasons why I was so happy that I could go back to house was because it's like, where's the R&B? Like, right. where, where's the love for R&B? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm seeing that it's starting to come back, so I'm really excited about that. And and in the interim, the, I have such a love for house. Like house will just feed your spirit. Mm -hmm. and it's been doing that for me, and it's like the the merge. It's creating a merge, and it's like with that and my love of hip hop, and, yeah. and it's just like the project that I'm working on now that that's coming out soon. It's a. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like it's kind of like a mix of all of the the, the stuff that I love. Mm -hmm. it, but, it, but the bottom line is, it all fall, falls under the umbrella of soul. It's soulful as hell. Yeah. So, you know, it's still me in that way. But I'm just excited about music again. I'm a, I'm excited about my music again, and it's yeah. like um, also just excited to be able to give. The fan, my fans that are always like, okay, when are you coming out with your music? When are you coming? Because I'm, with, I've worked with so many other people. Mm -hmm. it's like I'm so like geeked to like drop the stuff for myself now. Because like right. I really, really love it, and I'm really looking forward to performing it. So are we, yeah. So if if you could do like a, a feature or two with a few young artists. Mm -hmm. Who would they be? I always say, like, if if I had a daughter, an artist right now, if I had mm. a daughter, her, the artist her, mm. that would be her. <laughs> that would be her. I, I can see her. that. I, I see love that. her. That would be, if, if I had a daughter, 
she would be kind of, she would be like that. And and you know what? Her, she reminds she reminds me of you too in so many ways. Really? But she's in so many ways. And and also mainly that that one way that you don't see her a lot, but she's doing stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I love her. I love her artistry. I love her musicianship. I think she's dope. I just think mm-hmm. she's a dope artist. But yeah, I always say, oh, if I had a daughter, that would be that would it would be her. <laughs> but yeah, I love her, and I love um, I like a lot of artists. But if if I could put my finger, of course, Kendrick. Kendrick uh. is not new anymore. But like you know, I'm there's there's so. Like I said, coming up, like there's a whole nother hip hop head side of me too. Mm-hmm. Like I love like Kendrick, uh, Kendrick Lamar, and I love uh, J Cole, and of course, you know stuff like that. Um, What's some totally Shante that that we wouldn't even think that she like that we didn't even think she like? Oh God! I'm gonna oh. tell you, like for example, I like I like finesse two times. Okay, I'll tell you something. You yeah. You probably- I like uh and nobody would think that they wouldn't think I even knew it. Yeah. Oh god, there's so many things you would be surprised. I love Megan. I love Megan the Stallion. Okay. A lot of her like and this is the craziest thing. You know how Spotify will give you your roundup of like what you've been listening to? Mhm. Can you believe that Megan the Stallion is like was the top? I'm like how, what? Like right. that was the person who I listened to. That's because I work out to her. So you know, <laughs> like an everyday thing. Right. You know what I mean? What, what song do you work out to, Shante? Um, the the Savage. First of all, the Savage. Okay, I, yeah. So I, that resonated. There you go. And the Savage, Shantae Savage, the Savage House remix. Uh huh. So I have like all the mixes of that. Her new record, her, 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 she, she, she. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. Oh God! Just her, her whole last album. Um, I like Cardi B. I like okay. her too. Um, uh, what is that song? There's, there's a song on her last album. I think it's her and uh, God, what's the uh? You know, come on, line no more. There's a song called Ring, Ring, Ring. Her okay. And, What's that young lady's name? I always forget her name. But there's just, I'm all over the place. I love it. I love it. I'm all over the place. I love it. Uh, Little Dark. Little Dark, of course. Chicago's own. Yeah, that's the Chicago thing. Yeah. I mean, he, his, 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 you can't deny like the infectiousness of his hooks. Mm -hmm. Right. I love hooks, so it's like sometimes it's like, what, what am I doing singing this? What am I, you know? Oh my God, what happened to Virgil? It's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's stuff like that. It's like you, certain things are just undeniable. Yeah, you know, uh, N- New Edition is celebrating forty years being around. Oh my God! Like when you look at these numbers and you That's go, crazy. "Oh my God!" Like uh, there's a young lady I know; she's celebrating. 30 years with Bet You'll Never Find. Shante Savage. How's that feel? It's, it's weird. Right. It's so it's so surreal. It's like, mm-hmm. with 30? That's been 30 years? Exactly. It's like, oh my God. It's like, I didn't even know that. Somebody else had to tell me that. Wow. And, and it's like, we did that record ugh, 30 years ago. Hurley, mm-hmm. you know, Steve Hurley produced that record. Okay, and, yeah. Yeah, and... It was like, it was like the first, it, well, it was my debut album. It was like on my first album. Mm-hmm. And we did the video to like the, 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 we call it just the main mix. That right. sounds totally different than the actual version that became a hit. And that was like the Silky Soul mix. That's, that's the one that everybody loved. And we had to go back and do a video to all that stuff. But it's like, it's so surreal that it's th- that it's like 30 years. And I was like, wow. the timing, it couldn't be more perfect because it's like the perfect lead in to where my head is right now. Mm-hmm. I know I know you have to think about how like everybody's talking about 90s, 90s. And right. Like you have millennials doing 90s party. <laughs> exactly. And it's like. I think people are looking for 
that authenticity that we had that that the the feels people mm-hmm. are looking for that because after a while you can only bang your head and and just you know everything can't be hardcore right you know at some point we want to have some fun sometimes you want to talk about somebody that you love or that you feel in somebody sometimes you want to go on a date and express your love or dance at a party and people are looking for that and i think beyonce kind of touched on that with her record just getting people wanting to dance and come together and it's like that's kind of a 90s thing yeah yeah yeah. you know when when i see you know people in my field broadcasting and the, the possibilities the things that we can do with this new technology does that does that give you hope? Like, oh my gosh! Like, I, I have new wings again. Like, I'm gonna. Oh my gosh! When I come out, they're not gonna be ready. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. It's like um, one of the things I love about Terry. Terry Hunter is like he's such like a brilliant producer. Mm-hmm. People, a lot of people are not ready for this man. Like, not ready. He is a brilliant. R&B producer as well. People know mm. his house, but they don't they they are going to be amazed at how dope he is as a as a um R&B Produ- producer. He's dope. I I mean, nice. and I'm real picky because I'm a musician, so mm-hmm. I can't just work with, you know, anybody. He's dope. And but what I love as far as the technology, he's a nerd, he's a techie. He's a techie. He's yeah. such a techie. So he always has his hand on the pulse of mm-hmm. new things. So it's like he exposes me along with some of the younger guys mm-hmm. like to new technologies and stuff that we can do, even as far as uh, my live show, stuff right. that we're working on, like the things that I don't have to bring. Because we're going to be traveling and you know, I'm used to doing the whole band thing and I will have a band, but there's so many cool ways to condense um, baggage, if you will, and and get a full sound of a full band without bringing a hundred people, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, right. you know, and, and save you some money at the same time. And, it, you know, it's but it's all about the sound and how you can acquire like... Um, there's this is I'm, I look for warmth in my music, mm-hmm. and that was one of the things that always worried me about like technology and warmth. They don't really sound like they go together, right? But I'm learning, and I'm finding I'm learning and experiencing ways to incorporate that. Wow! So that that alone excites me. If you could go back in time and have a conversation. Uh, with young Shante Savage, based on what you know today, what would you say to her? Ooh, what would I say to her? I would say a lot of things to her. Mm. I would say a lot of things to her. I would tell her to, um, and some of it I, I, I've adhered to anyway, but I would say don't be so trusting of everybody. Mm. Um, never be bitter because I hate that thing and I'm not that but just be a little more discerning of the people who say they love you the people who claim to be your family because yes. that's not the case that's the right. main thing you know what I mean because I came in all bright eyed and bushy tailed like most of us do mm-hmm. and you're a little trusting you know where, where you shouldn't be and it's like uh, and the main thing, uh, uh-huh. get a lawyer. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Lawyer first. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's know, been, don't get caught uh-huh. up in the art so much that you forget the business. Absolutely. Yeah, listen, she belongs to us, y'all. Chicago's own, the one and only I Shante do. Savage. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you, darling. You are so welcome. It's so good talking to you again. Likewise.